Hello and welcome to the MS for Mama podcast. I'm your host, Abby Halberstadt, happy wife, mama to 10, Bible-believing Christian. And on today's show, I have such a treat for you. If you are watching on the video, you are probably already squealing and jumping up and down and clapping your hands because today I have Emily Morrow from Really Very Crunchy on the show with me. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. This is a real treat for me. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad it's a treat for you too because it is definitely a treat for me. So, Emily, you hail from Paducah, Kentucky, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. So, how many hours did you spend in the car yesterday coming 11 here? 11 hours. And there was a full moon. Yes. Full you did moon. a whole video about it. <laughs> so, just jumping right in, if you know who Emily is, which you probably do, she does these hilarious skits with this character that is like frenetically crunchy to the max. And so, you did this skit about how there was a full moon, it was going to affect things. How much do you feel like you're like living real life, but also incorporate, like just pulling things out to make it a video? Oh, most of the time we're just living and I'm like, oh, this is funny. This is really <laughs> funny. <laughs> we should make a video out of this. Yes. Yeah, so this morning at breakfast, uh, we're talking about some conspiracy theory and the response, what our response should be to the conspiracy theory. And uh, so Jason, Emily's husband was there and he says, wait, we're actually going to have to do this, aren't we? And she's like, yeah, probably. And I was like, this is like watching one of your skits when Jason gives her side eye and is like, fine, I guess we'll do this. So I'm not a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm no, not. It, the conspiracy, conspiracy theorist was not the point. It was the fact that he was teasing her by saying like, we're probably going to be jumping on this train. So, which... I am not nearly as crunchy as you are. In fact, my company makes a shirt called Crispy at Best because that's like raw milk. Your son got into fire ants today. Y'all, she doesn't know what fire ants are. <laughs> and so her poor little three-year-old came screaming, screaming into the house. I'm like, what do I do? But see, fire ants, that is an appropriate response to fire ants. They hurt so mm. much at the beginning. Well, I pulled out lavender immediately and was so proud of myself that that was my response. But that's, you know, that's about as crunchy as I get so we, we took care of it yeah but you know like the real I know deep crunchies wouldn't have pulled out against, lavender against I know oils. was it you BOCs or something some plantain like? chewed up and you slathered on there so what I actually did was I went and I got my plantains and I masticated uh -huh. them and then mm -hmm. I put them on Emily's yeah. son's <laughs> that's what actually happened no it's not what happened at all Okay, so hey, you, you had avocado oil. I did That's have avocado genius. oil, yes. So we are actually in a rental, if you recognize that the background is a little different, because our house flooded, and the insurance company found this amazing rental for us, and um, Emily and her husband like set up a whole studio. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to film in a completely different area, and they, they were just moving. They're like, we do this all the time. So this is going to be way better than it normally is, truthfully. But the rental had avocado oil. I do have avocado oil at my house, but we should just give... Oh, so it's it. probably rancid. It's probably yeah. rancid. Mm. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you came all the way to Texas to be a part of my book launch party, mm -hmm. which is so nice of you. How surreal is it that we get to do this as people on the internet? Yeah, it's really weird to just go from knowing someone's handle. I mean, I know your name. I actually didn't know how to pronounce your last name, and I've already forgotten it. And now, like, you just said it, and I'm like... Okay, wait. It's fine. I need that. It's fine. No, um, you'll be good. <laughs> but it's just, it is really weird to have this connection, and you don't really know who I am. I feel like I know who you are a little more than you know who I am, because you're seeing all these videos, and it's hard to differentiate We, we chat. Reality. We chat in DMs. I know, I know, but I still, like there's I'm, only so deep you like can go. It's true. There is only so deep you can go without meeting someone in person and doing real life with them. But it is so cool that while there are aspects to the internet that absolutely stink and are a total pain, and we'll talk a little bit more about that <laughs> later, um, the fact that it makes people that are like-minded more connected yeah. is just the coolest. It's very cool. Well, and your son just walked in and was like, I'm going to go play with the boy in blue because he's my new best friend. Mm -hmm. And the boy in blue is my son, Theo, who is Sweet. one of the sweetest kids on the planet. So I'm like, how cool that we are connecting not only with each other, but with our kids. So... Tell me, I know that you've told this story so many times before, but tell me about how Really Very Crunchy came about. All right. So I actually was giving up all social media at the end of 2021. I was done. I felt like it was distracting me from my family. And <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, it's time to get off of this app, mostly Instagram. Um, and then Jason has always loved 
video content creation. And like he's we, very good at he it. He is. And we've always done silly videos. We lived in South Korea for a while and made videos for our family back home. And so he was like, wait, <laughs> can we please just try making a comedy channel about you being a crunchy mom because you're ridiculous and I think people will think you're <laughs> oh, funny. so you actually are ridiculous. Okay, okay. <laughs> like I told you, I'm like anxiously wired, so a lot of my thoughts really align with the crunchy lifestyle because it's a lot of like, what if this is connected to this issue? And so I don't always follow through with my thoughts, which is Probably a good thing. Yeah, I mean, thing. I mean that's that's true for all of us. Yeah. Praise God that we don't always follow through yes, with our thoughts. Yes. And Jason kind of, he's my filter, so he's kind of like, yeah. Now just let this one go. Let Emily. it go. Just let it go. That's so all right. yeah. Um, so it was his idea. It was his idea. He's like, let's do this. Let's make a video every single day for a year because I think it will blow up. And I was thinking, yeah, okay, sure, dear. Nobody wants to watch videos of me. And Turns out I was, was wrong, wrong. <laughs> and you were very wrong. So, so basically, you had a video that went viral where you were bringing overripe bananas as a substitute for birthday cake, right? Yes, yes. And then it just kind of spiraled from there. Were you initially more on TikTok than Instagram? Yeah, Is that right. Mm -hmm. and we didn't even post on Instagram at first. It was all just a TikTok thing. And am I correct in saying that like Jason basically ran the account? Yes. So that was another thing. Um, everybody didn't know whether I was a crunchy mom or we were making fun of crunchy moms or we were a deep plant for, for an MLM. Young living. Yeah. <laughs> um, so people just didn't know who I was. And then people would make comments on videos and Jason didn't know the answer. So then he was exclusively answering in emojis. So only because he didn't know, you know, so he was just like side eye emoji, laugh face emoji, whatever. And it just added to the mystery. So then there were all these conspiracy theories about Speaking us. Speaking of conspiracy yes, theorists, um, yes. About like, who are we? And apparently my house looks like a set. I, we have really great lighting, but you do have great lighting. I don't have personalized pictures on the walls. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't, do that. I'm bad at that too. Yeah. So I have, but all your vintage paintings are so pretty. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't think they look like a set. When I think of a set, I think of what we just did, like turn the couch around and, mm -hmm. and cleared off the counters mm -hmm. and you know, like yeah. that's, mm, I don't, I don't get that from your house. Well, that's what people said. Oh, and people will say on my refrigerator. Thing. There weren't like kids drawings or, but half the time I'm like, Oh, we're filming. I know. Like, I know. Don't Who wants, I mean, especially if you have an aesthetic. Uh -huh. Because that's the thing is that not only do you guys produce funny content, you are good at maintaining a really particular and consistent aesthetic. Yeah. And that has to be intentional. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of art. Yeah. Part of art is saying, like, this is the look that we want. It's so funny because my friend messaged me the other day and she was like, there's a free Little Tykes kitchen in the trash on the corner of Boxwood and Cleary. You should go look at it. It's so cute. We rode up and it really wasn't cute. It wasn't but, cute. <laughs> but it was like, well, I don't need another piece of plastic junk to move out of the background of my videos because <laughs> we're trying to maintain this natural aesthetic. You're trying to maintain this image. Yes. <laughs> So where would you say the crossover is between your character, really very crunchy, and real Emily? Because I think I read that you said something like, I'm a 12 in knowledge, but like a six in practice, but Jason say says that. you're like an eight and a half. Yeah, well, I don't know. And I go through phases. Like sometimes I'm 10 out of 10 crunchy, and then sometimes like on vacation. Mm, Which is where know. we are. So... But I will say that your kids looked at our spray whipped cream this morning and said, Mama, what is that? So, <laughs> But I let them have a dollop. You did, you did let them have so, a dollop. The nice use of the word dollop. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, and you told me this story one time about after you did a video about bringing your own food to a party, a friend was like, it's okay if you bring your own food to my uh -huh. party. We're having chili cheese dogs. And you were like... I will smash a chili cheese dog. I love those. And she's like, oh, because she'd obviously, like, yeah, not differentiate. But I did take birthday cake to her son's birthday party. So there are, like, yeah. you know, yeah. layers. Layers. My older son is definitely affected by food dyes. So I can see the panic that parents have because yeah. when he eats that, like, it's crazy time. Crazy well, town. And that's less about being crunchy and that's more about paying attention and being an intentional parent. Yeah. yeah. So then it just 
it makes it hard for my real life friends to really know where I stand. And also whenever you have kids, they're mostly interrupting your conversations. So you don't always know, you know, where they Abs fall. Ab so. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. You have to assume that if you're having a conversation with a mom group of friends or just one mom and there are any number of children involved that nobody's going to finish a sentence really. And the only reason that we're able to finish our sentences right now is because we have really nice husbands and good dads who are dadding right now yep. and doing awesome. a good job of it, which is awesome. So when it blew up and Jason was right and you were wrong, did you think, I like oh. how you had to really like, and you were wrong. <laughs> You know, just just getting that in there. Make that clear. <laughs> you said it, not me. Um, did you think, cool, this could work, or were you like, oh shoot? Yeah, more like, oh, oh. So when I said I was getting off social media, what I meant was that I'm going to spend more social media time than I yes. have ever done in my entire life. Yes, because what was once, that like? once we started posting on Instagram, I felt like. I want to create a community. I don't want to just be a performer, yeah. you know? So even though it is comedy, there are people who come to me with very serious DMs and needing support. Oh, I've asked you questions. Yeah. yeah like, sorry to be that girl, but what would you do in this case? Because I heard you talk about it. I feel feeling like you might know. And then you answered me. Yeah. Well, and one thing that I feel like the Crunchy community really struggles with is anxiety. And mm. I have totally totally struggled in that area and so i recently had a woman reach out and say she is in a crisis and she has gone over the top crunchy her husband is probably leaving her oh. because she's being so controlling yeah. and she doesn't know how to back away yeah. from it she has this like addictive personality yeah. and so like it's really cool to be this character who can relate to that person but then also be this real person on the other side like i've been there and you have to let it go. Yeah, like you do. In every every situation, marriage comes first. Absolutely. So because relationships, because the Bible doesn't tell us to love God and love our you know standards or to yeah. love our obsessions or to right. love our you know stipulations for success or whatever mm -hmm. it ends up being, whether it's food or things we put on our bodies or you know careers that you're chasing mm -hmm. after. Because I feel like y'all have blown up so quickly that the sky's the limit. I mean, I feel like that you know, the people that are like, I want to, I want to show from you. I want to, I want to this and that. And while I don't have that same kind of content, I definitely, I mean, we've actually been approached for shows because probably mostly because of how many kids we've had and mm -hmm. because we've built houses. And, um, it's funny because you can be on the internet and, and give part of yourself to people genuinely where you're like, I really want to help you. And I really want to provide encouragement and support and, um, so much. And I'm sure you hear this as well. So much of what I hear is like, I don't have good mentors. I don't have mm -hmm. community. And while the internet cannot replace that, I'm just staring at the camera <laughs> and saying this straight, just in case you are confused. I think that the Lord can use anything for good in people's lives. So to hear like, I don't have a mom that's mentoring me mm -hmm. and, and I didn't really know how to read my Bible and I, I didn't know how to start. And so through this, you're helping me mm -hmm. to feel confident that I could, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think you're doing the same thing, mm -hmm. maybe in a different field. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're both moms and we're both interacting in a lot of ways, primarily with moms. I know you have a wider audience than I do, but you're touching lots of moms too. And my primary audience here is moms. So what would you say to the mom that is feeling called to let go of more Cheetos and Oreos and dyes and things like that, but also doesn't want to end up, I mean, you've written a whole book about this. So sure. tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah. Honestly, my book really pushes the idea of living a balanced life it's not worth chasing something all the way when it's going to ruin all the other aspects yeah i mean being crunchy is really hard this day and age yeah. it's just everything is so fast and convenient and there are pfas in everything and whatever all yeah. the dangerous toxins but god created our bodies to be so efficient in getting rid of those yeah. toxins that I don't think people need to stress about it as much as they do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's okay if you get a takeout coffee. I was like, what, what am I going to say that it's okay? <laughs> I know. I was, I was waiting for it too. I was like, what, where's the line? Really very crunchy. She's, I mean, and that's, that's the weird thing about being on the internet is that you want to tell people the truth. But the fact of the matter is there are really unkind people out mm -hmm. there 
and you actually do have to filter certain topics through a desire to protect your family, Mm -hmm. a desire to be like a wise steward of your space on the internet, a desire to, and I really believe God is sovereign. And if I'm going to get canceled, I'm going to get canceled. Or if he's going to elevate something, he's going to elevate it. You know, Mm -hmm. like that's up to him. We have to be faithful to do the thing that he's called us Mm -hmm. to do and do it as unto the Lord, as opposed to as unto ourselves. I mentioned that in my speech, that you really call women to do that. Oh. To live by God's will and not our own. Well, that's the goal. So, yeah. I mean, but it's so tempting to just take it all on to ourselves. It is. And and we, we, I think, especially as women, are really um, wired that way. We have a lot on our plates. We have a lot resting on our shoulders. As managers of the home, we have so many different balls that we're juggling. And it can start to feel like other people are getting in the way of our well-managed system, if, assuming that we've developed a system. <laughs> or it can start to feel like it's all our fault if the system isn't working. Mm-hmm. And um, that's all pretty anxiety-based thinking. Mm-hmm. And we are called in the Bible over and over again not to fear, not to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough worry of its own. So when we're talking about haters Mm -hmm. on the internet, which we have both had our fair share of, um, do you feel like that has upped your anxiety? Like, do No, no, I'm not. I worry about how they're going to respond to my book, but that's mostly it. And really it's not about me. It's about, I want it to be worth it for my publisher. Yeah. (laughs) So then I don't want them to affect, you know, yeah. Cause they've invested in me. They believe in me. Um, But as far as people, I mean, people are so bold because there's this screen. Yeah. There's no, um, what is the word I'm trying to think of? There's no filter. Yeah, there's no filter, but there's also no consequence for them being so mean. Yeah. So they don't even have to look at someone's face and see them cry. Or, you know, like you can just be as dirty as you want without consequence. (laughs) So one time... um, (laughs) Back in 2020, I was pregnant with Titus and Toby, and um, there was stuff coming up with George Floyd and all of this stuff. And and I, I think I wrote a post that was just kind of encouraging this concept of um, using the judgment, not jumping to conclusions. Mm-hmm. It wasn't particularly like racially motivated one way or the other. It was just like obviously we all have value in God's sight. But even just saying we all have value in God's sight was a really big trigger in 2020. And so um, someone got upset and wrote the word racist across my pregnant belly in a picture and posted it and and it was like kind of one of those things where they they come for you and and thankfully we reported it and instagram took it down um but i got a message from the lady who did it who the message was generally quite vulgar and and unkind um, which i have a hard time taking those messages seriously because while there is a real person behind the screen sending those ugly words they don't seem to be mentally stable enough to be someone that, I mean, m- uh, mentally unstable people can affect your life, mm-hmm. so they could affect mm-hmm. your life. But it's it's worse when it's someone you know mm-hmm. or someone that's like gaslighting you or mm-hmm. twisting your words intentionally. Mm-hmm. This person was just, it was just an all-out attack. Random. And they said something like, you know, I was the one that wrote that on your belly and it's like the single greatest accomplishment of my life or something like that. I know, it was it was such a strange interaction, but here was my favorite part. If I had a favorite part of this really weird message, there was cursing and all this stuff. And then at the end, she said something that she wanted me to stop doing and she called me a battle axe. Like it was so 1950s. Like it was, it was such a. It could have been anything. It could have been the f bomb or, uh-huh. or anything. And it was like you battle axe. And I was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so sometimes you can laugh. Sometimes it does get to me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm dreading what I feel like the Lord has asked me to post. There is a pit in my stomach, and my hands are clammy. And those are the moments where you're like, Lord, if you really want me to do this. I'm doing it Mm -hmm. because it's right. Not Mm -hmm. because I enjoy this, not because people are going to like it, not because it'll keep me from getting canceled. You know, all those things. Mm -hmm. And especially you, like, yes, I earn money for my books and I do some collaborations, but this is y'all's family business. Mm -hmm. So I think that you guys do an incredible job of towing the line of appealing to lots of people because you have a really wide audience, right? Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to... My space is meant to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. We are not political. We intentionally leave that out of our content. To me, it doesn't matter 
where my audience lies and it shouldn't matter to them where our beliefs are. Yeah. But it but, I know it, but does, it does. I know. They care. I know. <laughs> they want to know. <laughs> but we try to keep it very neutral and we just want everyone to enjoy it. And I even want haters to enjoy it. Huh. Because Same. I think people can find the crunchy lifestyle really funny. So like I don't have the same pit in my stomach that you do because I sort of get a free pass because it's comedy. Yeah. And some people can't take a joke. So no, some people that's don't very understand. True. And I feel like I, I get these messages all the time like, well, this was it. Here comes the unfollow. It's like, well, go for it because whatever. If you can't see that it's a joke, then yeah. you probably shouldn't be here. Well, and I'm always so happy for anyone to unfollow me that doesn't want to be there because yeah. because it's it's not about numbers. It's like if you want to be in this space and you want to participate, and this is a value to you, you mm -hmm. are welcome. Mm -hmm. Like I don't use the block button very often mm -hmm. at all. It's got to be someone who is very intentionally like threatening or or. or kind of chronically being a pain mm -hmm. and a problem yeah. or yeah. being rude to my other other readers yeah. or things like that. But I want you here if you want to be here. And I get messages from people who found me through hate sites and then they stayed because they were happy they to be it. there. Yeah, yeah. That's which, awesome. which I had this really cool message from a lady in the UK who was kind of a lurker on hate sites and was just curious. Like, what? She didn't have kids yet. She wasn't married yet. She was like, "What is this lady with these ten kids doing? <laughs> like, what is going on over there?" And then, like, she bought my book because they talked so badly about it, and she read it and she liked it. And then she went and read everything on my website from a different perspective than the, you know, the negative one. And then she became a believer. Oh, cool. And then she messaged me and, like, apologized. And wow. um, was talking about, like, I'm a new believer. I'm. She said something like, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and I believe that the Bible is true, but I'm really new to this, and I'm not a, I'm not in church yet, so I'm not sure if I'm considered a Christian yet or not. Aww. And so I got to write her back and be like, absolutely, you are my sister in Christ. This is amazing. Yeah, like, that is Thank so you cool. so much. So just for that alone, like that outweighs any unkindness or, or yeah. battle acts. And I have, so Jason and I, Jason says for our brand, I'm like 51% owner, so I have a little more say than he does because oh. it's mostly my image. Yeah, you're the image. Yep. So, um, but he weighs heavily on everything. And sometimes we disagree. We've made videos and then we watch them and we're like, yeah, that's, we, we can't post this because mm. it just makes one of us look really bad and it like the time that like the time that you did the bedtime routine yeah. and Jason didn't offer to help uh -huh. and the comments lost their minds yes and Jason was actually the one that put the kids to bed that night and then came down and filmed afterwards. yeah he fell asleep and he looked so rough I was like you're gonna have to go splash some water on your face and I'm over there like smearing, smearing my mascara. mascara trying to make it look like I was tired and yeah. they're all like guys Emily looks rough Jason get off the couch and help come on read the room <laughs> I know. I find your comment section very, very entertaining. It is really uh, I don't, I don't read a lot of people's comments at all because most of the time they're a dumpster fire and most of the time I just don't have time to do mm -hmm. any such things, but I will make an exception for yours. <laughs> well, whenever you comment, you get like massive likes. I've noticed that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> one, time, one time I had done something like posted to my page for something that like I needed people to know, but I knew it wasn't going to get a lot of interaction. Mm -hmm. So it, it had maybe like a thousand likes and not very much because it was just like a, this needs to be on here for information mm -hmm. purposes, but it's not a super engaging post. And then I told Sean, I said, I have twice this many likes on a comment from <laughs> really very <laughs> crushy. <laughs> That's hilarious. And they will. They'll interact with me and they'll come follow me. It's, it's this great give and take. So, um, and you have been, so you did some videos back on YouTube when you were in Korea, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what kind of level of interaction? Because, I mean, this is off the charts. You, you're getting, you're, some of your recent videos have gotten like 200,000 plus likes and, and 6,000 comments and mm -hmm. craziness like Crazy. that. Like, ooh, is that just still mind-blowing? Yeah. So whenever we had our Korea account, um, we had 7,000 followers. We thought that was pretty big. That is great. Yeah, on well, and that was a while back, and that really was. I mean, the numbers now have gotten so inflated, mm -hmm. it's kind of nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you can have. We had people recognize us yeah. when we were in Korea. Yeah. Like, hey, I, I love your videos. You're the reason I'm over here. Oh, so that my was word. Kinda, How cool yeah, is that? Yeah, it was so crazy. <laughs> but now, looking, I'm like, what? We have 2 million followers across the platforms. Wow. It's a lot. That is a lot, a lot. And then just all the comments. and. 
I really do try to keep up with the names that I see over and yeah. over. You know, I sort of feel like there's a little relationship there, but I can't possibly keep track of no. everybody. And I send out, like, I, rep I respond to my DMs on Instagram especially, and I send, like, heartfelt messages, but I've had people come up to me and say, like, that message you sent me meant so much to me. And I'm like, I don't know what I said. Yeah, my goodness. <laughs> I know, because it's impossible. I'm the same. DMs is where I keep up with Instagram. And so I can't, you know, like Facebook, I'm not able to do that. And, and I'm... <laughs> I do emails like the ones that I have to do and uh, you know, YouTube with these different things. You're just like, there's a lot and I don't even do TikTok, and I'm nearly the level of followers, but it, it is a huge, like it's an investment mm -hmm. of our hearts mm -hmm. into this mm -hmm. because we genuinely want to help people yeah. and we genuinely want that relationship. Um, so how often do you get recognized in public? Do you feel like? all the time mm. i can't go anywhere now at this point My which goodness. is so funny because i don't feel like i'm that well known you know so i think about real celebrities oh i know that must be so overwhelming yeah and they have assistants that do their grocery shopping for uh -huh. them and they you know anytime they they do go grocery shopping they get photographed from every angle yeah. and it's like that that's just a lot of pressure. i always have this little like little thing inside me i'm like is what i'm doing on brand because I know somebody's going to see, you know. Yeah. So, like, Jason will run in Walmart or whatever and grab something because I'm like, I, I can't be seen doing that, Jason. Oh, how funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it makes sense because, again, you created this brand where it's hard to extricate which parts of it are real and which parts of it are satire, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which you can tell from the comments. Many people yes. don't necessarily do a good job of differentiating between the two. And so, yeah, you'd have to be careful because you would get like 40 DMs like, well, I saw you in the Lysol section. <laughs> you no, would never. I know. I would you never. Would never. <laughs> but I've been like photographed eating at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Oh my God, You've not. been photographed? Oh my goodness, the paparazzi is after you? No, like, you know, a little teenager. Like, Ooh, how funny. Um, and then someone has come up to me and like, people want their picture taken with me yeah. a lot. So yeah. that's happened at Cracker Barrel and Culver's and yeah, those two places. But I'm like, oh, okay, well, my cover's blown. <laughs> my cover's blown. I'm still going to enjoy my custard. Yes. Sad gummit. Cause... I write about it in my book. So I'm putting it out there that yeah. I do enjoy Culver's mustard. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know. Well, I, I didn't I didn't need anybody to know that about me, but ours is Andy's. Do y'all have Andy's no, in Kentucky? No. Oh my goodness. You need to have Andy's while you're here so okay. that you can compare the two. It's a research project. Okay. Like okay. school. Yeah. 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 For if, sure. if your kids have had Culver's, mm -hmm. then you absolutely need them to do like a ingredient analysis mm -hmm. or something. <laughs> it's so good. Does Culver's have good toppings? Um, or are they just straight custard? They do offer toppings. We don't usually. Because Andy's like yeah. has like fresh fruit mix-ins and all this mm. stuff. All my Andy's people are like, yes, Emily, do it. It's, I don't know what Culver's is like, but Andy's is super good. I feel like Culver's is probably more syrupy. You know, like. No, it's they not have. It's like a fresh fruit Oh, situation. no, they, they have all kinds of fresh. They have, oh, they have really yummy. good stuff. Like mm. they roast their own pecans and. I might have made that up, but they have roasted pecans. <laughs> I don't know if they're over there. I'm like, I probably better not play this up. fire. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And their employees are very sweet. I'm just going to talk up Andy's. You should go try Andy's. We're going to, we're going to take you after the book party tonight. And this podcast is sponsored by Andy's. At <laughs> least it should be. I mean, that was a lot of airtime for one brand of frozen custard. Oh my goodness. But I do like, I back to what you were saying about how you feel like God tells you what to post and stuff like that. I yeah. know that was way back. I'm going Do back it. before Andy. Do it. Um, I feel we, like we I have... not need to stay on Andy's any longer. <laughs> I have prayed for God to use me through my platform, and it feels really tricky, and I don't always, like, know what direction to go, and my book is a perfect opportunity yeah. where I get to go more in-depth and actually talk, and it's sincerely written by Emily Morrow, yeah. not... Really, really very, very crunchy. crunchy but with really very crunchy in mind i mean that's the title so. yeah and yeah. and in the way that people are going to be approaching it because that's that's the persona yeah that they know and i do like i put it right in the introduction like this is from me not her but we are someone <laughs> <laughs> this is not me this is for me not her but we are both here yes. and she keeps whispering in my ear when i write reasonable sounding sentences <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Be a face. <laughs> That's awesome. So your book releases when? March 12th. 
And is it available for pre-order It yet? is available for pre-order right Yay. now. Yes. So, so we haven't actually announced that on our social media. Okay. But I don't know when you're releasing this. You um, guys are on the inside circle. We're releasing it on Wednesday. Oh, okay. So, so probably if, before I announce it. Well, and we... Mm, no, we it's could, okay. We no, go for we it. Could, we could I've already, this out. No, I told, I told my newsletter subscribers, so... Okay, yes. Yeah. They're, they're, the people, they're the people that need to know. So what are the big plans going forward? Do you, do you have like, do y'all do five year plans and, and, and business models and all? I mean, you met with your publisher for like publicity things on the way here. You were in Nashville. You were, you were doing videos with Switchfoot. You were like so cool. <laughs> well, so Jason and I often are like, okay, where are we going with this? Honestly, comedy, crunchy comedy doesn't feel like it can last forever. I think we're going There's to- a lot of content. <laughs> There's a lot of content. I mean, you should, yeah. You've done really well at milking it so far. Yeah. But I agree. It, it's a very niche uh -huh. thing. And I feel like we're going to have to start introducing more of our like sincere selves. And I've done a few videos where it's just me talking to the camera, really sharing what's on my heart, but those are few and far between. I feel like they perform well though. They do. People respond so, really well. Yeah. So. We're probably going to start doing a little more of that. I would love to create a kids channel on YouTube that like really encourages children to get outside. I know that sounds weird. Like here, watch my show and I'll tell you to get outside, but sort of like a, just don't get outside here. We have fire ants. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Still get outside here. Well, my youngest was like, I'm not going outside he did. again. He did. He's so cute. This little three year old voice. He goes, well, mama, I guess I can't go outside anymore. <laughs> I was like, I don't think she agrees with you. That YouTube channel would not say that. So in what free time would you do this YouTube yeah, channel? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. We're trying to figure it out. So I homeschool my children and that is top priority for me time-wise in my day. Yeah. Like that is number one. We have to get that in. How, how many hours do you feel like you use, you do on that? I mean, you're, you're, your kids are little bitty. They're little. Yeah. yeah. So just like two hours. Yeah. And it's mostly just the six-year-old. Yeah. The three-year-old just kind of hangs around. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, it's also important to me to have a time of reading aloud to them. Yeah. So we Same. also have that. I love that. But, um, I just ordered Tum Tum and Acorn or whatever the name of that little Tum -tum series. Tum Tum and Nutmeg? Nutmeg. That's what it was. Ah. I don't know where Acorn came from. But you were talking about it. And I was like, okay, we need another series. Okay. I'm going for it. Genuinely love that book. I think it was written in the 1800s, so the language is a little different, but it's really great for expanding vocabulary. And they didn't dumb down things for kids. No, back they then. didn't. So no, no. I like that. Um, but I have like my kids have been ready to go to bed, and I'm like, what if we just read one more chapter? <laughs> so that video was a lie. <laughs> really very crunchy. Doesn't want her children to stay up. Emily Morrow does. You're the better mom of the two. <laughs> So yeah, I love it. You'll love it. I That's bet. awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. We have not started it yet. We are in a little bit of a busy season. Yes, I see that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm having chronic back problems and the chiropractors are like, I think you're stressed out. I'm like, no kidding. You know, <laughs> but I don't know how you be, I mean, I, my brain feels okay. Mm -hmm. My brain feels, feels happy. My brain feels calm. I feel like, feel like we're doing fine. My body's like, I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm drowning over here. So I'm doing all the things. See, I have chronic that. neck pain. So I definitely, so the fact that we're you. sitting yes. here with a giant, here, let me turn my knees <laughs> <Yeah>. towards you. <laughs> this help? Um, but whenever you're posting about how your back hurts, I'm like, Oh, I know that feeling. The other day I was hiding beside our couch and my three-year-old got up on the back of the couch. I had a blanket over me, you know, like classic mom hide and seek. Oh my word. And he just jumped onto my head oh and no. it made it so bad. And I was like, buddy, you know, mama's neck hurts. Like, you know, you're not supposed to do that. And he was like, I thought you were a mountain. Oh, hilarious. Really? Did you really? <laughs> I thought you were having a Susanna Wesley moment. She had like 21 kids and the big story about her is that she would take her apron and she needed a quiet moment. She would just Put it over her head. No, I was playing hide and seek. Okay. <laughs> you were hiding from I mean, your children, sort of, sort of. I did appreciate the time. Yeah. But I only have two, so. Yeah. Well, I um, walked. There's the, in our rental, the island has these, I'm just going to use the S word, they're stupid corners on this island that aren't normal corners. It's like this cutout, and then they're real pointy. And we all keep catching our hips on them, mm. which hurts like the Dickens in and of itself. Mm -hmm. 
But then if you have a back issue that is constantly guarding itself and then you produce like a jolt mm -hmm. plus pain, mm -hmm. like it was like fire through my back. So the hip, I didn't even feel. That was just what produced the response. Mm -hmm. um, so you have this video where you talk about um, or, or you just do this funny little skit about cold plunging or like cold shower mm -hmm. taking this is from a while ago mm -hmm. and you're like nope that did not lower my cortisol levels well this is exactly what my chiropractor told me to do and I hate being cold more than just about anything mm -hmm. so I'm like but it's funny because it's like the thing that keeps popping up that I feel like, you know, there are convictions from the Lord that we have over really moral things, right? And then I don't consider cold plunging moral or not moral, right? But we have convictions of things we don't want to do because yeah. they just hate them, mm -hmm. you know? And I just kept having this thing that pinged until this chiropractor was like, I am prescribing you cold plunging. Cold plunging. So do you have a special cold plunge Oh area? no, oh, I just dumped a bunch of ice in my bathtub and climbed in. That's awful. It's weird. I don't think I got it cold enough, if I'm completely honest. I think they say that, like, 55 degrees is the point where it starts having actual, you know, like, good effects on your body or lowers your core temperature. Whatever. I don't mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I just hear that it's good for you. And um, and the water came out. Sean has a heat gun. My husband has a heat gun and pointed it out. The water came out at 80 degrees. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The ground here is so hot on September 30th. <laughs> Like we're about to do this book launch party today. It'll be, it'll already be done by the time this posts, but today, and I just have watched the temperature creep up. So it starts at 4 PM. It is the highest temperature of the day here at 4 PM. People will be standing in line to get books signed at 4 PM roasting in the mm. 94 degree temperature. Mm. And it's not actually that humid right now. So it came out at 80 degrees out of the faucet. We dumped in a bunch of ice. I think I probably got it down to like 60, maybe, but 60 is cold. That when is it's cold. Water. Yeah. I mean, I was having like, physical reactions Yeah, as to really it. very crunchy, I say. It was, it was, it was good. It was good, yeah. it was good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so what have you done for your chronic neck pain? Have you done anything crazy like plunge yourself into ice baths? I haven't. Um, stress is a huge trigger, yes. so just managing my stress, managing my anxiety. I have a pillow that I have to sleep with. I look so prissy coming into <laughs> places, like this is my pillow that I need. So that that sort of just keeps my neck And your alignment. mouth tape and your... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually... I don't use mouth tape because I naturally keep my mouth closed. And I, I mostly do too, except for when I, Sean, if he's listening to this, is like, I don't know, babe. But <laughs> when I'm pregnant, I snore like a freight train. Oh, funny. It's something about, well, probably weight gain. Weight gain, yeah. Um, but also say. something else in all of this mm -hmm. swells more than normal mm -hmm. and pH balance of your saliva changing. All this stuff happens. And it's bad. It's very bad. Otherwise, I don't snore very much. But golly, bum, the poor guy. He's just whacking me all night long. And I'm like, I can't stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to mouth tape. But the thought yeah. of mouth taping while you're pregnant oh, is way awful. claustrophobic. Yeah, like, I, I don't know how people... I do sleep with frownies on my forehead. But I don't think I could tape my mouth. That almost feels dangerous to me. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Emily Morrow, but not really very crunchy, just said that mouth taping is dangerous. She went on I know. I said it I'm almost teasing, feels I'm dangerous. Teasing. I'm twisting. <laughs> She's like, just leaned into the into the mic and was like, I did not say that, Abby Halberstadt. Halberstadt. That's Halberstadt. How you say it. Okay. Yeah. Halberstadt. I hear lots of Halberstadt. Halber yeah. Halberstadt. Like people try to Germanize it. It is German. It's a uh, there's a town in Germany called Halberstadt. Um, though that's not how you say it. I'm sure. Um. And it's like Halber is like half and Stadt is like village. So like mm. half village, I guess it was small, but it's like a little, um, like a goldsmithing community, I think. And so when we went to Germany, it was this big debate, like surely, but it was like six hour drive one uh. direction to be in a town that was, I think it's fine. I think mm -hmm. it has like old churches and stuff, mm -hmm. but you're in Europe. There's mm -hmm. old churches like, mm -hmm. like East Everywhere. Texas, like Tyler, Texas, I think has like 125 churches. There aren't that many old churches in Halberstadt or whatever, but they're on every corner mm -hmm. to some extent. So we didn't end up going because that oh, was a lot bummer. of driving but with yeah. 10 kids. To, yeah, I can totally see that. Because they would have been like, okay. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> where's the, on where's sign. the sign? I know, you got to take a picture <laughs> in front of the sign. So homeschooling, you actually do that. It's really very crunchy mm -hmm. does that as well. And then you really are doing crunchy th things at home. Like what, are, what would you say are your top five favorite crunchy things? Like 
baking bread or like what 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 do you enjoy about yeah, it? Yeah, making all of our food. So that is actually such an annoyance and also something that I find an immense amount of pleasure in because mm, I, I love cooking yeah. and I love having just really flavorful dishes. Um, and I just think homemade food tastes better. But so that is one. Um, and it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Like I've made videos where I joke about starting dinner at 2.30 in the afternoon, but that feels very accurate. That feels because very you just accurate. have to... If you're making everything, it takes a long time. Yeah. Um, and then we don't use like any fragrances, scented candles, cleaners, stuff like that. We use cleaners, but not fragrance cleaners. <laughs> gotcha. Our home is sometimes clean. <laughs> it's clean ish. Yeah. yeah I, clean -ish. I, I, I can relate to that. Um, I don't know what else is there. Oh, we do walk around barefoot. I do wear barefoot We are both shoes. barefoot at I the know. moment. I, I, I don't have shoes on in, in, in honor of, I, I really have started wearing shoes more in the house, which I know is gross, but just, I think out of like busyness of life, like I'll come home from the gym and I'll have to do something and then just, just keep going, going, going. So I don't take them off. But growing up, I almost never wore shoes. And I just remember how callous my feet were because mm -hmm. I would walk around like on our asphalt or on the, you know, like the sweet gum balls in East Texas. You're like, I don't even feel it. <laughs> I feel nothing. I've got leather for feet. Thankfully, and half my yard is moss. So oh, nice. it's pretty soft. Yeah, that it feels is. like a fairy nice. land. So yeah. you do garden, yes? Yes. Mm, it's not a huge garden, but yeah, tomatoes, peppers, pumpkins. That's well, gardening? I got one. You got one. one so pumpkin. one time we got an accidental pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Just throughout. That's apparently the way that it should happen. Okay. Well, we yeah. did it the right way then because mm -hmm. we are clearly really good at this. And so, yeah, we've thrown out the remains of the, like, you know, fall pumpkins on our uh -huh. steps. Grew a legit, giant, gorgeous, shiny orange pumpkin. And my then, at the time, 11-year-old second born, who is really good with food, scraped that sucker out and made the best pumpkin pie of my oh, entire cool. life, complete with homemade crust. That's like, it was awesome. such a homeschooling win, it wasn't even funny. Like, if I could have just put that down on my homeschooling mom resume, I would have just quit then. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, those homeschooling mom resumes don't exist. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> I care, Abby. What, what, I care. What grade, did they make, what grade did they make in U.S. history? That's what I care about. <laughs> so do y'all have a homeschooling community in Kentucky? Yes. Sort of. Um, there is in Paducah, there's a homeschooling group, but it feels very, like, it's just on an app, and then people post, like, we're going to go do this, we're going to go do that, and it feels sort of geared towards older kids. Oh, yeah. That so, I did create a Forest Friends on Friday group. That's is, real! Yes. That's real! I had a friend, like, hey, is Forest Friends on Friday real? If not, why don't you do that? And so, I did. I post through the Wild and Free website, just yeah. so people can find us. Yeah. Um, but we still call it Forest Friends on Friday. We're going to get bandanas we might even start wearing patches and oh stuff, my word know? it's gonna take off yeah. it's gonna be nationwide mm -hmm. that's such a cute name that's a great name i know my friend even wrote a song that we can all sing together before we start our little hikes or meetings is this yeah. song going to be featured on one of your videos i should yeah I should. you should it's do really it cute. you should do it except she put it to the tune of toys r us kids so oh. i don't know if that's is that allowed. legal i don't know they're out I mean, of business for her, right they, i think so so Probably. Whoever created it is going to come sue you because you have a lot of people. So just be prepared to give <laughs> yeah. up your life savings we'll see. to the Toys, Toys R Us guy. TBD. <laughs> TBD. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so we do that. That's one way that our kids, you know, connect with other kids that are homeschooling. They're, they are so young. So yeah. right now we don't need anything super yeah. formal outside of what we're doing at home. So Yes, and, and, we, and we just created our own homeschool co-op. So, like, it's here all mm. day. You know, it's my children. So. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Yeah, tell me about your homeschool co-op that you created, Abby, in your free time. Yeah, it took about 14 years, and we had 10 kids, and so my four-year-old gets great socialization with his six-year-old brother that's a little bit older, and his two-year-old, two brothers, oh, they just turned three, that are a little bit younger, so I'm kidding. We actually do, I'm not kidding, but, but we actually do a college prep co-op as well. Which is really fun because Tyler, the area that we're in, is very homeschool friendly, mm. very organized, mm -hmm. very like on top of things. There's a uh, Tyler area Christian home educators, Tachi is what it's called. I know I had to think about that. Um, and so they will they will have like 
plays that they put on. Oh, cool. Um, we're in a homeschool choir. I mean, wow. and it has many members, and they sing beautiful productions for Christmas and and spring. They'll do one in at Christmas, one in the spring. Um, so yeah, we're really rich in resources, which is so cool. I was homeschooled growing up. Yeah, that's awesome. And our co-op was forest friends on Friday. I mean, like probably less organized than, it was like the, the mom showed up to the crunchy, mm-hmm. it was the nineties crunchy moms and they showed up and the, like the truck would pull up and they would get their carob chips and their, their wheat kernels and their, I don't know, we, we, we ate these orange gumballs but like they had nothing bad in them i don't even know why they were that they were like naturally orange are they, they were, the tree hugger ones oh i have no idea i don't remember and we drank spritzers which were like it didn't have any added sugar mm-hmm. you know or anything like that but we, we loved them i loved all of that stuff and uh and then the kids would run around wild and free so oh, cool. but amazingly we had a pretty decent amount um i grew up about 30 miles east of here and fairly small town like 15,000 no more probably more like 12,000 people and um, they, st- we still, I guess that kind of movement was taking off right about the time when I was school age and my brother's four years older, right, right, right in that time. And so we had probably six, seven, eight other families, which is pretty decent for like yeah, 30 that's years big. ago. Yeah, you know? that's so really good. I think this area has just had it for a while mm. because when I post about things, people are like, I wish I had community. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, sorry, you have to be the one to start it, mm-hmm. which is what you're doing. Yeah. Well, Paducah, I mean, they have a decent size, but everybody also has different beliefs. And since COVID, there have been more homeschooling families, yeah. but they're more of like a secular homeschooling yeah. group. So they're having a hard time finding their place in the homeschool, you know, because it's been primarily dominated by Christian Absolutely. families. So, yeah. yeah, it just feels kind of scattered in Paducah. And Paducah's not very big, 30,000 people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just not as many resources. But, but again, we're kind of responsible for mm-hmm. creating our own. Mm-hmm. Like I hear from moms so much that they want friends, mm-hmm. that they want community, mm-hmm. that they want their village, whatever that you know ethereal term means. I think one thing that I have learned. So my husband and I have moved sixteen times, Woo! and we've only been married thirteen years. And some of those moves have been like. Korea, Nebraska, Wisconsin, just all over, Mm -hmm. you know, and really part of it boils down to not being so picky, Mm. I think, with friends, Mm. and thankfully I have found a really sweet friend that I bond with, and everything clicks, but before that, (laughs) 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 sorry, keep going, (laughs) but like it just people have flaws and I think people are looking for like this perfect Absolutely. thing yep. and I'm not even sure that's out there. No, like, look the at Bible your... wouldn't tell us that love covers over a multitude of sins if we uh-huh. weren't dealing with people committing a multitude of sins that our love is supposed right? to cover over. Yeah. So I think that's one thing. People are looking for something that's not really there yeah. usually. Yeah. Um, and then also you have to show up Yep. and people aren't willing to do that. Nope. That's like step number one, show up. Well, I mean, and you're, you're literally doing that here. I know that you didn't just, I mean, you drove here for this, but you guys are carrying on with a vacation after mm-hmm. this, but you didn't have to drive 11 hours to be at someone's book launch party and stay at their house and be on their podcast and chat with them and share your kids with them and stuff. But that's an effort that's made. And I do think that we want something, but we don't want to work for it mm-hmm. because it's hard. And mm-hmm. then, you know, hard is not the same thing. It's bad, <laughs> but relationships can be really, really hard. Yeah. And One thing I hear people talk about all the time is it's so hard to make friends in your 30s. It's so hard. And I think part of that is when you're a child, what makes a relationship a lot of time is shared experiences Mm -hmm. and bonding. And so when you're a child, you're like shoved into these situations and you just automatically create those friendships. Yeah, create memories, yeah. So as an adult, you have to make that happen. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like also I get questions about people that are from people that are saying things like, well, how am I supposed to have friends when everyone in my neighborhood is a lot older than I am or a lot younger or whatever? And that's a very, I mean, I understand what they're saying and I'm not attacking them, but it is a very me focused, mm-hmm. like they're not serving me because they don't match my criteria. Mm-hmm. And I can feel that way too. Like, how do I know if I can like this person if they don't like this, that or the other, if they don't homeschool, if they don't, and I don't, I don't feel that way. I'm, I'm happy to be friends with any form of 
a parenting technique, whether it's schooling or otherwise, as long as our core values mm -hmm. align. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. you gotta you gotta be Definitely. discerning. Yes. Oh, for um, sure. And, and that's going to be true. I think I think that there's this this kind of stereotype of people that are being discerning from a biblical perspective, like oh, those bigoted people that close them. Oh no, I see people that are like, I would not want my kid to be around those weirdo homeschooling Bible believing kids. You know, I mean, th this the thing is like we yeah. all have mm -hmm. our discernment levels, mm -hmm. and they may look very different and not overlap very much. But back to that person that was saying like. Their ages don't line up with mine. Their interests don't line up with mine. There is something to that. But in this season of my life, I'm 40 now, but in my 30s, in the last like five years or so, yes, my best friend is like five months to the day older than I am. We're basically the same age. But he has brought a lot of Titus II women into my life. And I think that a lot of moms are missing. They want that, but at the same time, they just want to be poured into. Mm hmm they want to be mentored mm -hmm. and taken care of mm -hmm. and directed. And they're missing that component of turning around and saying, how can I serve you? Mm -hmm. How can I be your friend? And I'm just going to use a really like polarizing term, but don't be a leech. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't mean that that's your intention, mm -hmm. but if we are to like in Philippians, it talks about consider others as better than ourselves. Look not only to our own interests, but to the interests of others be completely humble and gentle. Like it talks about in Ephesians four, then you are, looking for ways to think about yourself less, not think of yourself less, not think less of yourself. There we yeah. go. And, and think about like, so some of my best friends right now are women that are 15, 20 years older than I am. And I'm so grateful for their influence, but I'm also grateful that they're not just condescending to me and being mm -hmm. like, let me teach you something. They're like, no, I like you and, mm -hmm. and you have value for me too. And mm -hmm. they're so grateful to be included. Like, intergenerationally mm -hmm. and we miss that a lot mm -hmm. um i think something else with that leachy kind of um tendency it the internet has sort of made us that way mm -hmm. because we're constantly being fed like all these affirmations and everything and so i feel like we need that i mean there's actually science behind being on your phone and the dopamine hits yeah. mm -hmm. and so then you get out in real life and it's not quite like that no. so it's a little bit hard to be there you know that's one reason I wanted to give up social media yeah um so I also think that people because they have this online presence and they're um used to being fed these affirmations so then like when they post something about their life they're getting all this positive mm -hmm. feedback mm -hmm. and so then like in a real conversation that's not how it goes no. and so that makes real conversations harder because you have to keep going and like the other no, nobody's the other pressing end. the yeah. like button yeah, or yeah. giving you some sort of virtual high five well and it's funny because i i you were on the internet way back in in korea when you were on youtube but you've only been like blown up on the internet for a year and a half ish mm -hmm. right and i've been steadily plugging away for like 12 years and i was not really on social media when I started my blog and I didn't like phones and I didn't like technology. Mm -hmm. I thought it was obnoxious. And I feel like that slow burn growth to where I am now has given me such like, I don't despise the internet. I don't mm -hmm. despise social media. I see people like really disparaging it and I'm like, yeah, there are aspects of it that are not good, but I just see that if you're intentional about the way you use it, there was, more aspects or at least can be more aspects that are positive but i don't have any of those expectations mm -hmm. of, of real people mm -hmm. i think because you see those expectations laid on you as a content producer mm -hmm. and it can be really icky let me just clarify i'm not just bashing people i think that 90 percent of my interactions online are very positive oh, and encouraging yeah. and kind mm -hmm. like um and your percentage may be lower because of kind of like <laughs> the way your audience is uh -huh because you're a character online, mm -hmm. they probably do feel a little freer to pot shot you because mm -hmm. they're pot shotting a character mm -hmm. as opposed to a specific person. Although I think they come for you personally too. I think they do. I yeah. think a lot of people who are pot shotting are thinking that that is really me. Yeah, that is so. really you. They're, they're not able to, and we, yeah. So that's, that's frustrating. One thing that's funny though is, so I have this TikTok audience who thinks I'm funny, but they don't really care. They're not that invested. Yeah. 
And then I have Instagram, who's very really invested. invested. <laughs> and I love my Instagram crowd. And I appreciate them. And I feel like we align in a lot of ways, a lot of areas. Probably some they would be a little disappointed in. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because they, they're assuming they know you. Yes. Yeah. So, And then I have the YouTube crowd, which we're almost at a million on YouTube now. We actually Ooh. have a bigger YouTube audience. That's amazing. Than TikTok. But um, they view me as... An actor on a sitcom, I oh, think. Oh, because yeah, they're in so, video format, so they get it. I guess. They just, yeah, they view it as a sitcom. And so that's kind of nice. But uh, so they're less after you because mm -hmm. they don't think of it as real. Uh huh. They just think it's funny. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Well, and, and I was just going to say that I think that, so I was making that disclaimer that. I'm not bashing my readers. I love you guys genuinely and I want good for you. But so I have these I have these kind of joking three categories of DMs that I get and this is going to make some people not DM me because they're the reasonable Rebecca and I'm not talking to you, but anyone that thinks that they're talking Anyone that knows that thinks that I'm talking to them, I'm not the one that they're talking to. So I, I kind of joke that I've got a starstruck Sally that's like, oh my goodness, you answered me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm just a human. Yeah. You know, like if I have time, I will answer you because yeah. because we're humans and yeah. we're like there's no there's no tears here, right? I'm not on a higher tier, I'm just a human. And um, and then there's the presumptuous Peggy, which I'm sorry if your name is Peggy, mm -hmm. but that's like literally like please take a video of your entire schoolroom and label all the books according to grade level and then send me a personal video you know and um i wish i were kidding but i actually have gotten something very similar to that and then there's you know reasonable rebecca which my wonderful virtual assistant or one of them um becca her name is rebecca and i'm like you're so reasonable you were always reasonable right maybe maybe subconsciously that's why i use that because you're so great but um they will be like hey if you have time totally understand you're busy and we don't actually know each other, but I think mm -hmm. you're pretty cool and I would appreciate it if you could help me out with mm -hmm. this way. And you're like, mm -hmm. of course I'll help you out if mm -hmm. I can, you know? But I don't, I feel like because of the slow growth, because of social media not being what it is now, and there's just the obsessive nature, TikTok didn't exist, Snapchat didn't exist, like mm -hmm. some of these ones that have just really captured the minds of the young and become super addictive. Like they're intentionally addictive. Mm -hmm. The way that the format mm -hmm. is actually created is this, the, like the height of dopamine hits, you know, and there are people behind the scenes that are literally programming things yeah, to become right. more yes. addictive yes. because that means more revenue yes. for them, yeah. more users, more viewers, and all those things, and it makes sense. But because I started before a lot of that, I'm kind of able to stand outside it and be like, Sure, it's nice when a post does well. Mm -hmm. Sure, the affirmation is great. Mm -hmm. But there's this um, there's this quote from Notting Hill, and there's that really famous one where she says, "I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking mm -hmm. him to love her." But then there's something where he's kind of fanboying about, and she goes, "Oh, it's all nothing." You know, I, you, I can't even explain to you like how much of a nothing that it is. You mm -hmm. know, and you have to have that view of the fact that even when something does really well, it could be gone in a moment. Mm -hmm. Like, and people's, we see that with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, Hosanna, welcome to the king of, you know, the Jews and King David and come save us. And the mm -hmm. minute he didn't do what they wanted, mm -hmm. you know, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but they're crucifying him. And they're instead putting, you know, a zealot who was hopefully going to overthrow the Roman government in his place. So not to over-spiritualize it, but I do think that while there is nothing new under the sun, the internet's kind of new. Mm -hmm. But what isn't new is our sin nature mm -hmm. and the way that people react to it mm -hmm. and the way that they, um, that we, that we, that I can become obsessed with it or reliant on other people's approval, which mm -hmm. is why we are never to do things for other people's approval. The Lord, we're supposed to be doing things for the Lord, not for man. And it means humans, not just men, <laughs> the gender, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that going back to that friendship thing, how do you feel like, so you were going to get off social media completely, mm -hmm. and now you're on it more than ever. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've managed the balance? Probably not, except that I can say, like, okay, I'm setting aside this time to look at my comments and respond. It feels more business-like. Yeah. And less um, like seeking personal pleasure. Yeah. I used to have a really bad habit of whenever my son, my older son, 
was doing something independent in homeschool, I would just like scroll a little yeah. bit, you know, because like he doesn't need me right then, but he's going to need me in a minute. Yeah. But now I'm not even tempted to do that yeah. because I want to be in the moment with him and I'll set aside time later for that. So there are books that talk about the difference between being a content consumer and a content creator. Mm -hmm. And obviously we are part of the problem because we're producing content yes. for people to consume, but it is up to people to responsibly consume mm -hmm. the content. And mm -hmm. you do have to be honest with yourself about the level at which you're doing that mm -hmm. and the level of distraction that you're having. But I do think on the content creation side, it does become something where you can kind of have this like remove and be like, I, cause there are days I do not want to produce anything for anyone. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I don't, I'm not on my phone. I am with my family mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm with my family anyway, but I mean, I'm just like, I have no desire to do that. I'm not being led to post something specific. Maybe the algorithm would hate me. I don't care, mm -hmm. you know, cause mm -hmm. you just can't, mm -hmm. you can't let it rule you. Um, but when you're looking at it from a content creation perspective, it takes so much out of you that sometimes there isn't that much that you have that's interesting to you to put back in, like, yeah. to, like, to, like to, to try to, you know, yeah. get back from it. Right. You're like, I gave it to you yeah. and that's where it that's stays. Where yeah. yeah. And I actually, people message me all the time asking if I can share more in my stories about my real life and mm. share. And I'm like, well, I do like stories and I like giving people glimpses, but I also like being present in my real life Absolutely. and I have a hard time pulling out my phone and still being present because if I'm going to pull out my phone and I'm going to record it, then I'm going to want to post it and then I'm going to turn on my captions and I'm going to, you know, mm. and then, oh, start getting messages. Okay. I better respond to yeah. this because there's just 10 messages right now. If I keep on top yeah. of it, then it won't yeah. overwhelm me, you know? So then I'm just like, eh, I just won't, just yeah. won't share. And I don't show my kids on, um, on my platform. Part of that, see, I feel like when people come to your platform, they know what they're getting and they are there for a reason. Yeah. And my platform, I feel like a lot more people just kind of stumble on it and they're not really sure what well, it is. Well, the, the videos is. are shared and mm -hmm. they don't know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I watched a couple of your videos back in, I mean, I think you've been doing it for maybe six months and it took me a minute to catch your tone. I was like, what, what's going on here? Is she... This all the same questions everybody had. Like, is she mocking it, or is like like that who she is? Oh, it's who she is, and she's mocking. I got it. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I got it. We yeah. Can, so I do feel like I know what to expect now, but it takes it takes a minute to calibrate. Yeah. 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 So I feel like, and people can be so ugly oh, goodness, in my yes. comments and stuff that I just feel like it's better not to show my kids because. Oh. Yeah. And like their middle names really are Oaks and Alder, and people laugh at that, and it's like, yeah, I mean, well. Yeah, that is their real, that's their real yeah. name. People, uh, people, will laugh, <laughs> people will laugh at anything. Though. So I just feel like it's probably safer. And so then like, what am I going to show people? Yeah. Because I'm with my kids all the time. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. Back of their so, heads a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went to Europe this past spring and were there for six weeks. And I felt like that with that kind of opportunity and knowing so many people were like, I'm never going to get to do this trip. And mm -hmm. we had planned it for years mm -hmm. that I'm like, I'm taking you guys with me as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, I did not want to be, you know, like this the mm -hmm. whole time. So the first couple of days I was trying to find a balance during the day and I just couldn't for posting. So after about two days, I just would grab snippets of things, save them. And then, I just, I was, I was going to say wasted, but I really did want to bring people with me. So I forewent a lot of sleep. Oh yeah. And I noticed you posted. So I would really post from times. 1130 to like one in the morning every day when wow. everybody else was asleep mm -hmm. because that's what kept me from spending. And I saw that it took me an hour and a half to post, mm -hmm. but like somewhere in that range was when I could finally get on my phone, mm -hmm. write captions, you know, mm -hmm. do all the fun things in my stories. And I am always, and one of the reasons that I do show my kids, because I always have from the beginning, um, was because mine is a combination of a ministry and a family journal. Mm -hmm. And on my blog, it always was as well. I was actually really bad at taking pictures before I started a blog to be intentional about it because I just wouldn't pick up like a big heavy camera and I hated phones. Mm -hmm. I know, so weird. Like, how are we the technology averse, like social media averse people where we are now? Because it's where we're supposed to be. Uh -huh. Like, because it's kind of against the grain of who uh -huh. I actually want to be in a lot of ways. Well, not, not who I want to be character wise, but like how I like to use tools. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't love technology. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, and you said you hate it. So. I hate technology, and I actually hate attention. I don't like to be the center of attention at all. And so, and look and at you like, with your two million followers. Jason's like, this is why the Lord is using you because. I just feel like I don't deserve this. There's no reason I should be chosen to be in this position. So yesterday, my publisher, who flew here for my book launch party, which Aww. is amazing, um, was here is it last Heather? night. Heather, yeah. Oh, cool. So Heather's I here. Meet her. Yes, yeah. you do. Um, and so she was here last night. So we had a whole group of volunteers that were organizing merch for Paint and Prose and packing swag bags and stamping things. And we were just having a great old time. But it was ours. Of work and at the end of it she was showing me some book related stuff and then um i think i can say this because i think it's a i think it's a done deal um hopefully hopefully it's a done deal um but well maybe i'll just be vague but she told me that i'm going to be in a store that's like a really big deal and um and i'm not a crier and i didn't know i was going to do this i think i'm tired but i just started crying mm -hmm. like i just i just this is so not normally me and the thought going through my head was like lord why me like, why, why me? Like, it could be anyone mm -hmm. that got this. And, and, and again, this, this, is, this story is a big deal for who I am. Some other, like, true celebrity wouldn't be impressed by this. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm so grateful to be used and still baffled. Like, um, mom of 10 who writes, you know, in, like, little snippets of time and... Um, but always wanted to do this, not this, not the podcasting mm -hmm. and the other. This is fun. This is a perk. But I actually love the podcasting, the talking and, and the, the just getting to like, like I got, like, it's almost like getting to sit and chat with people that I'll never actually get to meet. Except for you, I get to meet. So that's fun. Um, but I don't do a lot of guests. So this is great. But uh, the, the social media and the blog thing, I really resisted for a long time and, and had people tell me I should do it because of the writing thing, because the writing thing mm. is what I wanted to do. Mm. But it didn't feel like the Lord was ever going to say yes to that. It felt like instead it got replaced with just share daily here. This is where I have you. And then that went where it's gone. And I don't know, it just, it, it hits me often that it is just a ridiculous privilege to have this influence. I hate the term influencer. Mm -hmm. I think it is super icky sounding. Mm -hmm. But if I think about it in terms of what we're actually called to do for the gospel, mm -hmm. we are to have an influence. We mm -hmm. are to have sway over people for good and for the Lord and for his glory, not our glory. And so then I have to, it's just so, I mean, people use the word humbling all the time. I'm so humbled that I won this award. Um, but it was just, it was a moment of like, really like, goodness gracious, you could choose anyone. And you chose to allow this to happen to me. And I don't think I even understand why, but um, may, may it be for for God's good, mm -hmm. you know, um, for God's glory and, and the good of people. So. I think I mean, we're going to see a lot of that with you, with your book. I really do. I mean, you, you told me how many you sold just from sending out an email blast. And I was like, dang, girl, that's impressive. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for coming on. We'll put all of your handles and your book pre-order and anything else you want us to put in the show notes. But it was so lovely chatting with yeah, you. Thank you, Abby. You're welcome. This was fun. It was. And thank you, listener. Yes. Listeners. There's more than listeners. one. <laughs> Just assume I'm speaking to the one who's except, watching. Except, except, except I hear from a lot of moms who listen with like their teenage daughters or oh, listen really? with their husband. Thank Isn't you, listeners. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know you guys were encouraged by this talk and I hope you enjoyed following along with us as we talk about all things social media and this weird world that we live in and motherhood and crunchiness and not so crunchiness in my case <laughs> and all the things. And we will see you again. She won't, unfortunately, but I will see you again next week. If you enjoyed the MS for Mama podcast, I would be so honored if you would subscribe and follow along, maybe share with friends or even leave a review. And if you want more content on motherhood and biblical responses to cultural issues, be sure to follow along on Instagram at m.is.for.mama.